Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at a keyboard from Hello Gans. I previously um, did a review on their 108, uh, their 1800 layout, which I actually found to be not that bad for a stock keyboard and I also found the fact that it uses disposable batteries or AA batteries uh, to power it quite nice. as. I don't always need a wired keyboard, so I don't have to worry about any spicy pillows. So today we're taking a look at their 75. Uh, this one I purchased off of Amazon about a week ago. So this is the one we're taking a look at, the KS75T uh, GSSL CHP GG17 KS75T RGB Mechanical K Bayard. You gotta love those misspellings. And Gans, I think the name of the company is Hello Gans, but I've seen them as just GANs as well. And this comes with silver switches and cherry profile. It says lithium battery, so I don't know if this is the same thing, but let's go ahead and open it up. So in the box, we have a USB A to USB C cable. This one seems to be molded specifically for the keyboard. We have a, um, I don't know if that's a light diffuser, and we have a couple of blockers a blocker with the light diffuser okay we'll have to take a look at that we also have a USB-C to USB-A converter converter and we have like in the other one I actually this is the exact same colorway that I got the other one um it's copying GMK midnight I think uh, I can't remember um it includes the entire keycap set so in case you want to use it on a different keyboard because they're actually pretty decent double shot I believe PDT keycaps. And we also have our user's manual. And here's the keyboard. Oh, it has a D-pad. All right, that I kind of missed. I thought that was just a little light badge. But, so it does have a knob. And it has a D-pad. All right, so for an in-stock keyboard to have a D-pad, it's kind of interesting now. It is quite rough and it feels like it only has four positions as opposed to eight. Yeah, it does not. It clicks and it. Hmm. I, that, I've got to say, is interesting. All right, so let's take a look at the build here, real quick. Um, very similar to their uh, 1800. Um, you got the G for the 2.4 gigahertz. And, all right, yeah, and there's the um, USB dongle for the 2.4 sitting under there. But wait a minute. Okay, so this doesn't have batteries. I okay, so that's why it said lithium. All right, I guess there's some of these that you can use batteries on, and some that come with a built-in battery already. And this appears to be that. So if we turn it on, let's see. Do we get light? Yeah, there we go. All right. So I gotta say, I'm still quite interested. I wonder what this does plugged in. Let me go ahead and put it back to wired and plug it in real quick. I'm just. Just real curious there. Oh, that's called a joystick. So, brighten. Yeah, so it's tied to the lights. Slow it down or speed up the effects. Okay, so that's what it's tied to. I'm gonna guess that it's not um, programmable as yeah, the other one did not have software, so I doubt this one has software as well. But I was curious to take a look at it. It was in my cart, came across, and I thought, like I said, I thought that was just a colored badge that maybe I could 3D print something over. Uh, but I, I, now that I'm thinking about it, one of the mods <coughs> posted that they got this keyboard and he replaced it and put something else there. But I do believe he said D-pad. Um, but I might have been just confusing that with another keyboard. Now, this, I gotta say, is interesting. Now, I was not, and I remember, was not able to, oh, never mind, I guess you can. Oh, well, look at there. I was not expecting for that to happen. Okay, yeah. So I could put a regular switch there, or I can, it has like pogo pit, well not pogo pins, but 
basically a little, uh, not a, not a, it's like a header, kind of. And that's, um, so it takes care of lights and the rotary, but you can pull it out and it's actually, you can put a switch in there. That, I gotta say, that's actually pretty cool. Um, so the light, the light must be in this entire thing right here. Oh. To replace the knob as well, but it's not a regular D knob. It is a, a round knob, which um, if they have the locking nut, you should be able to fit it on here. But yeah, this whole thing has its own. Oh, let's not take the header apart. But it has its own LEDs. It's almost like a little breakout board. All right, so obviously just, you want to just keep in mind that you're uh, going to be limited to a encoder or a knob for an encoder that's not a D knob and you're gonna have to be as close as possible because the stem coming off of there barely gives you any room so the the depth of your um it's, it's gonna have to be shallow in order to use it uh, that doesn't want to come off all right I want to stop taking it on and off so it will actually stay on there all right so and then this just seems to be more of a gimmick, in my opinion, but it does have, what is this? Is that a blocker? This will actually make a little bit more sense now. So. Oh, this is a clear knob. It actually does have a. It's nice that it comes with a different knob. Although, I definitely would have gone with a different color on a black, but especially since the light doesn't sh shine through there. We've got a couple of blockers in case we want to do a, a WKL. All right, that comes out. And we have a spot there. And you see, does this come out? Okay, so we got a black cover over there, but well, I don't know why you want to cover up the lights. So this, I'm just not sure. This looks to be the same thing that's in there, but I'm going to assume that I'd have to actually get in there and open it up. And as you can see from the cross, there is only four positions like I felt before. It's not like a 8 or 16 D-pad. All right, well that's, I gotta say, that's interesting. Um, just don't see, I, while I might not use that, that is interesting for an in-stock keyboard, because I mean, I know there's one that's got color badge, obviously there's some that have the screen right there. Um, but for an in-stock keyboard to have something like this, I gotta say, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug it for right now, make sure I don't accidentally hit so, and again, just like the uh, 90 or the 1800, these actually sound pretty good. And we have a, um, it's their version of a silver. Oh, this one had MK creams, yeah, box creams. These are the new V2 cream, kale box creams. They sound particularly similar. So it looks like in here we have nice uh, foam between the plate and the PCB. It looks like we have an IPXC mat above the PCB. We have LEDs that sit flush, so they're SMD. And we have a steel plate, I believe. Yep, and a steel plate. So we've got another 75% with a knob, which there are plenty of them out there. This one, though, is a little bit different. Now, um, I know I got it on a coupon, but it's roughly around the same price as the other ones. Uh, it is wireless, um, but as we can see, although I mean, it's really down to the uh, choice of the user at this point, it is north facing. But, I mean, these are cherry keycaps, and there's no interference. Um, I'm going to guess it's because of the switch. Um, but, 
it's not as much of an issue nowadays as it used to be, even a year ago. So, um, because as you can see, these are cherry, and they come with North Face. So, um, being that they're three five pin hot swap compatible, you're going to be able to use any other uh, switches you'd like to try out. The fact that it comes with a complete keycap set is um, honestly it's a plus in my opinion. I mean, this company I have not heard of until recently when I reviewed their last one, but that was sent out to me, I want to say, by one of the stores. It wasn't sent out to me by Gans themselves. I haven't talked to them. This one, I, like I said, I just bought this one off of Amazon because I saw it listed. But um, it's a uh, they're doing a lot of things right. Um, I would still love to see a different material plate. PC plate would be perfect. That would improve the sound significantly and it would stop it being so such a harsh bottom out as it is. But it's not bad. I mean, a full keycap set switches you need and you've got a little bit of custom customization the ability to customize it to your own to you know content and as far as these go the knobs and then you can also you know block the light out there if you if you don't want it um yeah i don't think that'll serve as one of the knobs and then i don't really know i mean i guess you could put them there let's see how that looks so, uh, i mean I like blockers here, but obviously because we got the different sized um, modifiers, it's just not gonna not gonna look as good. And these um, they are kind of pretty loose. Not too many keyboards, in stock keyboards under a hundred dollars that include extra keys, let alone an entire keycap set. Um, the customization with the knob is pretty cool. I like that it has that that light, and and if you want to block the lights, you can, because it has a black piece. It seems minor, but for a lot of people, that's you know, that's custom because they can pick and choose, and that's you know going to be even the slightest bit of difference. It's going to be different from everybody else's. So, I think that's a, a that's a really nice idea. The colorway I like. I liked it. I picked it on the other one. I picked, so I picked it on this one because. The keycaps are decent. So yeah, this is the HS75T. Let's get technical. Today we are taking a look at the Hello Gans HS75T. This is a three mode, 75% with a removable and exchangeable knob. It does include Bluetooth 4, not 5, but has five device positions. The swappable knob can be replaced with a switch if so desired. It does include an entire keycap set that are double shot PBT, a GM, GMK Awaken clone in the Cherry keycap profile. They do come with silver OEM GANs switches. It does not include any software, though the website say, states that they will be soon launching a cloud driver, which looks a lot like Akko's software. This keyboard comes weighing in at 885 grams. The chin of the keyboard sits at 18 millimeters, which is one of the lowest chins I've seen on a mechanical keyboard that is not low profile. The back of the keyboard sits at 34 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of eight degrees. Using the first set of feet, you will raise the back up to 38 millimeters, changing the typing angle to 10 degrees. Using the final set of feet, the back is raised to 46 millimeters with a typing angle of 13 degrees. This keyboard does come with a 4,000 milliamp hour battery, though there are subversions that allow you to use AA batteries instead. This keyboard manufacturer retails for $79.99 and comes in about a dozen colorways. So today we take a look at the Hello Gans 75T. Um, now there are both uh, built-in battery 
like this one, 4,000 milliamp hour battery, and ones that will run off of AA batteries. I don't know what the designation is to figure out which one's which. All the ones that I saw on Amazon appeared to be the already built-in lithium battery. Um, it does retail for $80, which it's kind of on the border. I mean, right now, $80 is still an okay price, but we're starting to see pre-builts that have PC plates that have, you know, gasket mounting, even if it's faux gasket mounting with keys and everything for a little bit less. Now, this does have um, something that a lot of keyboards do not have. You can exchange, you know, not only could you put a different knob on here, it will be hard to find a knob that fits properly, but you can take out the entire knob assembly and just put in a switch which I think that's a pretty cool thing for as far as customization goes. And you can also change that collar out so that the light doesn't come out here if you don't want it. I kind of like it. And I do know that uh, one of the mods on uh, Budget Cubes, he actually replaced it with a cool little symbol here. And it just shines through. So um, there's things that you could do with this. Uh, and being that it's a plate-mounted keyboard, a tray-mounted keyboard, I'm sure I could probably make it sound a little bit better. But... I, I really hope they're looking at meeting the current market because this this would be perfect, say, for 2022. But, you know, we're a year in. I mean, we're a few months into the year. So hopefully they're looking to match what the market now ha has to offer because we're seeing just some amazing keyboards uh, come out. I think we did a good overview of the keyboard. Um, I hope that I had I answered any questions that you may have had for it, but if I didn't, uh, make sure to uh, ask your questions down below in the comment section. Uh, like I said, I have reached out to Hello Again. I want to see if I can review some of their other keyboards and see what the designation is between the ones that are um, regular battery or double-A, triple-A battery power and the ones that have built-in lithium batteries because I would prefer wireless that has double-A uh, battery, so I only have to load them up with batteries when I need it to be wireless. Otherwise, I don't have to worry about any spicy pillows. Anyway, the chin on this keyboard is really low, so if you've been looking for something like that, this might be it. Um, so 75% with a knob, but the knob is, is a little different than the rest of them. I'll give you that even different Though similar than the GK75 from Skyloom, um, different in the fact that it has this little light module with it. And I, I think that's pretty cool. It almost makes me want to put a longer stem on there so I could put a really nice knob. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave you guys now with the stock sound test. I'm going to start changing the sound test a little bit. It's going to take me a little while to revolve completely. But I, I am going to do a section that just focuses on the sound of the middle row for all keyboard sound tests that I do, switches and keyboards. Uh, that way, because I mean, this is always kind of the, even if it's gasket mount, the center row is always kind of kind of give the uh, true or closer to the true sound. I'm going to try to set up a, well, the best environment that I can set up for recording um, sound test so that you guys can get a better idea and i've been working on those if you've been watching videos i've got a couple of the baseline i've got two more baselines to go but i've got some reviews that i want to get through so that i have the time to focus on those so anyway i'll leave you guys with a stock sound test of the hello guns hs 75t and um i'd love to know what you guys think about it and until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on